What's going on, everybody? This is Al from PlayboyGamer.com, and today I want to go over all of my sliders and settings in NCAA Football 06. I was talking to somebody in the comment section a few days ago, and he asked me if I had a video on this stuff, and I don't, and I've never created one, because if I change something after the fact, I always felt like it didn't make the video as useful. Well, that's not necessarily the case, because... I've never really given you the reason why I have certain things turned on, a certain slider over here and there, and so on and so forth. So I thought a video would be a great way to cover every bit of that. And what we're going to cover is not only sliders and settings, but I'm talking about everything under the setting sun in 06. We're going to go over gameplay, AI, penalty, visual, audio, easy play, and so on and so forth. So let's go to the very top of gameplay. And let's start off with quarter length. I've been playing on five minutes for years and years and years. And the only reason why I have it on five minutes is because I get realistic stats and scores. And I look at two main things. First of all, with the scores, if I'm having a pretty good offensive season, I'm getting close to 35 to 40 points a game. That is what I keep seeing on five-minute quarters. Now, if I was on five-minute quarters and I had a really good offense and I struggled to get... 30 points at best, then I knew I would have to increase it. But five minutes has been really great for me, especially like in the yards department. A really good offensive game is like close to 500 yards. Really no different than what you see in today's game. So five minutes has been really good for me personally. And it helps a little bit when I create videos because I'm showing every bit of every game in all those videos. So that's why I keep it on five minutes. Now, skill level, let's talk about this. I've been playing on Heisman forever and ever. Now, here's what I suggest you do when it comes to sliders. I'm going to talk about this right now. For those of you who are new to the game or who don't feel uh, very comfortable playing on Heisman or just not very good in general, whatever that may be, I always suggest you start either on Varsity or All-American and keep everything at default 50. All the CPU, all the human sliders, everything at 50. Once you start blowing teams out, really good teams on varsity, now you need to move up to All-American. From here, keep everything at 50, play some games against some really good teams, and once you consistently start blowing teams out, then you move the Heisman. Keep everything at 50, and then when you start blowing teams out a little more consistently than what you're expecting, that is when you can start tinkering with sliders. This is the recommendation I've been given forever and ever, and I hold true to that. Because a little later on, I'm going to show you my current slider set. Having said all that, let's move on to the next. Game fatigue, very self-explanatory. You want to keep that on. It keeps things realistic. Same with injuries. Impact camera rotation. I've always kept it on. Those uh, usually give pretty good thumbnails for me. And it just gets a little oomph in your gameplay. Home field advantage. This is an interesting one. I've been keeping this on forever and ever. Now, there was a short time where I actually turned it off. The only downside with home field advantage is hot routes and audibles on the road in a hostile crowd. You can't do hardly anything with it. That's not realistic in the day's world because everybody uses hand signals and they just look at to the sideline and look what the coach is telling them. So if you want to keep it more modern, I would suggest you turn this off. But I like having it on because it affects in-game player ratings and such. So if a player is playing awful, his ratings will go down a little bit, or it'll go up. And that affects, throughout the season, his progress in terms of upgrading his overall and such, if you have it turned on. If you have it turned off, everybody stays even keel. So it's neither here nor there. It depends on what's most important to you. I think, overall, home field advantage is more fun with it on. There's a plenty of workarounds with the audibles and the hot routes on the road and such. Of course, you can call any type of offense that doesn't need a whole lot of that, and it's not going to be uh, that much of a difference anyways. But for me, I like to have it on. Camera shake, I like to have it on. It just makes things more fun. Campus challenge, this is interesting. This is one of the regrets I've had is I've always kept this off because this is reflective of your profiles. Now, when it comes to profiles... I'm a big playbook guy. I have a bunch of different profiles saved on my game at once. Those are different playbooks. You can't have multiple playbooks saved on one profile. You can only have like one at a time. That's why I always keep this off because I go back and forth between playbooks all the time. 
with dynasties and such. So I just never bothered. However, I, I kind of regret doing this in a sense because I would love the idea of seeing what all I could have accomplished over the last 15 years if I would have kept the exact same profile. Can you imagine all the records I would have broken, all of these achievements? It would have been insane, all the cool things I could have unlocked, like in your pennant collection and stuff like that. But I've always kept it off solely due to playbook reasons. But for you, I honestly suggest you turn it on. It's just fun. Now, the only small downside to this, at the end of every game, when you achieve a bunch of stuff, it takes forever for the uh, end of the game to end because you got to sit there and look at every single little achievement that you accomplished. Other than that, I think it's pretty cool. But for me personally, I've always just had it off, again, due to those playbook uh, reasons. That is it for gameplay. Let's talk about sliders. This is my current slider set. I have been using these specifically for, what, six months, maybe? I, I had everything almost at default 50 forever and ever and ever. Then, over time, things just got to be a little bit easier, and I started lowering some things. So let's start off with the offense on the human side. Quarterback accuracy, I've kept this at 25 for a long, long time. And you've watched me play plenty of times. There are some games where my quarterback just plays lights out. A lot of that has to do with the offense I'm running. I'm pretty efficient in getting him, you know, good spots to throw to, things like that. But I've always felt it fairly realistic keeping that at 25%. If I have a quarterback that doesn't have great accuracy, it's going to show. But if he does have good accuracy, it's going to show. So I've always liked that at 25%. I've never really felt the need to change it anytime soon. Pass blocking, I've kept it at 50. I feel like that's kind of realistic. Sometimes my players get pushed back. Sometimes they get a push themselves. Uh, sometimes they uh, do really good pass protection. All that good stuff. So I've kept it at 50. Same with wide receiver catching. Now, this one's an interesting one because I get a handful of people every year complaining that their wide receivers, their running backs, everybody keeps dropping passes. I don't see a whole lot of that, and I don't understand why people see it more often than I do. I don't, I don't watch you play, so I don't know if you're throwing in the double coverage all the time or you're throwing in to unopened wide receivers. I, I just don't know what's going on specifically, but I've always kept it at 50, and I feel like these guys catch the ball just fine. It seems pretty realistic to me. Um, yes, they may get up to a 7, 8, maybe even 10 drops in a season, just depending on the player, but that's kind of normal in a sense, I guess. That's barely won a game. I've just been okay at 50%. I've never felt the need to change it. Running back ability, I've put this at 40 for a long time, mainly to do to the whole impact running back situation. If I had this at 50, my impact halfbacks would probably be bulldozing over everybody like what we see with the CPU nowadays. But I've kept it at 40, and I still feel like my running backs do just fine. I mean, I just want a husband with Williams at 40%, and he does his normal thing. He doesn't break every single tackle, which I'm happy with, and he shouldn't. So I've always been pretty satisfied keeping it at 40. Run blocking, I've kept it at 50, really no different than pass blocking. I just like the way it feels. Now let's talk about the CPU side of this. I have everything CPU-wise at 99% across the board. So here's the offense, everything at 99. Defense, 99. Special teams, uh, we can talk about that a little bit later. But when we go back to the offense, I just wanted to see what would happen if I turned everything up to 99. And I'm pretty pleased with what's going on. The quarterbacks, they still make bad throws here and there. Pass blocking uh, is still pretty good. I mean, I could still get a defensive end on my end to have about 10-plus sacks in the season. So that's pretty normal. Sometimes their wide receivers will still drop a, pan, a ball. A running back ability, this is the one you may want to tinker with. Now, again, I'd only suggest you use this slider set when you feel like you really got to move up from default Heisman. But with the running back ability, we all know impact halfbacks are killer in this game. I get burned by them all the time. A lot of just because they break tackles just so much. And that's where the running back ability comes in. So if you get absolutely frustrated with the impact running backs, you may want to lower this down to 70 or whatever. I don't know. It's up to you how you want to do that. Run blocking... This was the one that I've actually wanted to change over the last few months, but I've held my ground, and I'm going to keep it where it's at. Run blocking, there are some times where you see all five offensive linemen for the other team just get an amazing shove on my defensive front, and it can get aggravated. I'm like, there is no way they're pushing everybody five yards consistently, but it doesn't happen all the time. Uh, yes, that is another way for the running backs on their team 
to break really, you know, good runs and such. But overall, I think it's more the running back ability, just the impact running backs breaking tackles. Otherwise, our run defenses, I think, are okay. But these are the two that I would suggest you may want to tinker with if you get really frustrated with CPU running, if you're playing with these sliders. Okay, so let's go back to the human. Now we've, figured, we've looked at the offense. Let's look at the defense. Human, 50% across the board. I've never felt the need to change anything. I feel like my defenses play kind of normal across the board. I don't feel like they're too smart or too dumb. Knockdowns, it only helps if you got some really tall defenders, especially on the back end. Uh, interceptions, I... That's kind of normal to me. I don't see anything really weird on that. Some people like to lower this more. But if a quarterback, a CPU quarterback, throws it wide open to a free safety, he's probably going to catch it. So I just don't see anything really weird about that. But I have seen some people lower this more than others. Break block, I could probably raise this if I wanted to to help out a little bit on the run defense. But honestly, I, I just don't feel like it at the moment. I'm just okay with it. Again, I think the impact running back thing is more of an issue than anything else, which kind of goes to tackling. I've kept it at 50. I don't want to raise it anymore. Uh, I don't know. I've just been okay with 50% across the board. I'm fine with that. If you need to make adjustments, by all means do so. CPU, I got everything at 99, as I talked about before. It's all maxed out for the CPU on my current slider set. Special teams, I've had everything at 50 for human since the beginning. I've never really changed anything. I know the kick meter on Heisman is absolutely brutal. I struggle with it at times. But if you notice, I've had a couple of good kickers these last few seasons uh, with Tulane. Kicking's fine. You just got to get, you got to practice the field goal kicking. So I've kept it at 50% on everything across the board. I think everything seems to be pretty normal for me. CPU, the only thing I've done is lower the field goal length and accuracy for the CPU. If you put that on 50, even at 25 now, I see kickers just bang 60 yarders left and right. And I just thought that was just a little bit unrealistic. They were always making them. So I lowered them both down to 25. Now, every now and then they'll miss one, depending on their talent. I've gotten really good, realistic feedback or results putting at 25% for both for the CPU. So that's something to keep in mind. The rest of that I have kept at 50. All right, let's look at... Uh, I think we are done with that. Uh, let's go over to penalties. This is something kind of new I've tinkered with. I've kept all the top four on. I've just never felt, of course, we want to keep penalties on. Offsides we want on. All this you want to keep on. This used to be at 50 across the board. It wasn't until about I, maybe less than a year ago I had everything at 50. Now I moved it up to 70. Now I'm starting to see, I don't know, five penalties a game, which is enough for me for five-minute quarters. If you feel like you need to see more of something, just increase it. If you want to see less of something, decrease it. For example, face masks are pretty common. Clipping is very common. You don't hardly see offensive pass interference. Let me just go back at the top and look at this. False starts, you see these occasionally, so I'm okay with it. Holding, that's pretty normal. I don't, well, I don't see this too often. But again, I don't worry about penalties too much in a game like this. You don't want your games to be just ridden with tons of penalties every single game. But it's up to you how you want to do that. But some of these other ones I don't see too often. Clipping's very common. Intentional grounding, I never, if ever, see that. Most quarterbacks usually do a pretty good job not doing that. Roughing the passer, I'll see that every once in a while. Roughing the kicker, I never see this because a, a defender never comes to block anything unless it's a punt block, which I've been able to do a couple times. But field goal blocking, you can't really do it in this game. Unsportsmanlike conduct, I never see this, but you never see me taunt a after a touchdown. I don't do any of that. But otherwise, I've kept it at 70%. I've kind of liked the, the results of it. I'm okay with seeing five uh, or less penalties a game. That's good enough for me. Next up, let's look at the visual. I don't know how important this is for you, but if you want to, you know, I'm playing on the PlayStation 2 emulator. I'm playing on my computer, of course. I've kept everything at widescreen, 16 by 9, forever and ever. Uh, I suggest you do the same. Play uh, Player displays, that's pretty simple. I just always use the name. Auto instant replay, I always keep these on because they usually produce good thumbnails, and it just makes the game more fun. Field lines, first down, you can also do both. I've never used that before, but if you ever want to know where your 
you know, line of scrimmage is at, you could put that in there, although it's kind of obvious, you know, where that's at, where you can see the ball before the snap. Anyways, camera, there's actually a bunch of options here. Classic, that's a little more zoomed out. This one's more zoomed in. Sideline, I would, I can't imagine ever using this one. Overhead is a more, it's like a big picture view of things. And, but I've always kept it on NCAA. It's just a very standard, normal camera view. Let's go over to audio. I don't, I don't think any of this will be important in the grand scheme of things. Every decision I'm making on this screen has to do with me creating videos. I have everything down next to nothing. 10, 20, 10, 0, 20. All of this is for video creation purposes. But if you're just playing at home by yourself, crank up whatever you got to crank up. I would normally, with play-by-play, -play, I would like to actually turn this off. Because technically, during the game, you don't need to hear Kirk and Lee and Brad talk while I'm playing. I'd rather you hear me talk. But if I turn this off, the intro before every game, if it's a televised game, it bypasses all that. I want to see that stuff. So I've kept that on. The rest of this stuff, it's up to you. Now, ask Corso Audio. Uh, you can turn that off or on. Of course, we can look at the actual uh, setting here in a little bit. But I always keep it off because I just don't use it. But the rest of this, it's just pure preference on your end, depending on what you're trying to get out of your audio. Easy play. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about this. I've never used it. It's for those who are, I guess, just awful at the game. I don't know, but I've always turned it off uh, across the board. System. This is another It's personal preference. What I usually do with the way the home team and the favorite team, it depends on what I'm trying to do. Like for my favorite team, it's usually the current dynasty that I'm running. That way I can uh, fool around. I can keep up with their records. That's the biggest thing is keeping up with school records. Otherwise, um, that's the only thing I really do there. When it comes to home and away, I suggest you take advantage of this in practice mode. What makes sense to you? Do you want to go up against your default favorite team? Do you need to go up against a certain defense? Whatever. This is a good little shortcut way to kind of get to that without you having to spend time picking teams in exhibition or practice or what have you. Random team, uh, that is if I had this turned off, I think. I'm not really sure. I, I honestly forgot kind of what this is for. I think is if you do not have a favorite team, it just kind of gives you a random teams to throw out there. If you got to reset anything, this is where to do it. I suggest you don't. It's just not worth it. Now, maybe if you want to reset records, you can. I kind of understand that. Or if you just want to overhaul your settings, you can. But again, I suggest you don't really do any of that. Last but not least, let's talk about the controller. I have been using the 2005 configuration since the beginning, I guess, and that's only because that's what I was used to playing NCAA 2004, NCAA 2005, even Madden 2005. They keep with the same thing, and I think the biggest difference between the 2005 and the uh, the 06 version, I guess is what you call it. If I go click OK, of course there's a street. I want to go over to the fall. The biggest difference is... When you look at rushing, I think is the juke moves are a little different. L1 and R1, in, in this case for default, is your stiff arm left and right. I've always liked the 2005 because I love those jukes at L1 and R1. If you don't like those, go back to default. It's kind of up to you. And there's probably a couple other different things that affect uh, the configuration. But I think the biggest one was the rushing stuff. Again, the L1, the R1. Uh, things like that. Otherwise, I've just kept it to that spot because that's just what I'm used to. The only downside to 2005 is the sprint button is different between it on defense. If you go over to, uh, let's go to defense, the sprint button is circle. On offense, it is X. This is PlayStation 2, of course. But if you go over to default, sprint is the same on both sides, which makes sense. I understand that. But again, I've gotten used to it, just using circle, the, you know, the run around on defense. So I've kept it on 2005 just for familiarity purposes. Vibration on, that's just kind of up to you how you want to use your controller. Player lock, I've always kept that on. It's just simpler on defense. If I'm used to playing a free safety all the time, it always goes to the free safety. If you turn it off, I think it defaults back to the very first defensive end, I, I think. Again, it's been so long since I've had this off, but I've always kept it on. Auto subs, I always keep it on. I think the game does a pretty good job of subbing in and subbing out. And speaking of, here's the auto sub out and in. I've always maxed out the in and 85%. I want these guys as pretty much as healthy as they can be by the time they get back into the game. 
when it comes to sub out i get it down to about 75 i've seen some people max this out i think it's 80 is the max out if i'm not mistaken and it is i've always kept it at 75 and i've been fine with it it depends on the positions of course there are some positions where you never see players go in and out like offensive linemen like they just never sub in or sub out they never get tired hardly defensive linemen get tired all the time quarterbacks can get tired all the time if they run enough halfbacks do as well wide receivers not as much so it's kind of hard to get like a perfect balance but i've been pretty satisfied with 75 and 85. passing mode is quick i've always kept it on that if you put it on normal you have to hit the x button again to bring up your icons i don't see any reason to have this i always want to use quick it's just easier man shift i've always used auto that's when you're like especially you're on defense if i'm running a 4-3 and I'm going up against a three-wide set, the play side where that slot receiver is at, that linebacker will naturally just kind of go over to that slot receiver. That's what I want, especially in my quarters coverage, especially in my man coverage. So I've always kept that on auto. Last but not least, auto strap fade. This is something I probably need to use more. I think it's probably safe if you're if you struggle tackling in the open field, that is not one of my strengths. Everybody's seen me play this game enough to know sometimes I can really whiff on tackles. The strafe, 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 I hope I said that correctly. I probably butchered it. But when it comes to that, it does a really good job of kind of keeping your defender in front of the ball carrier so you can make a solid tackle. But I've always just kind of not used it, and I feel like I've done okay. Plus, it makes for more wild plays when I don't use it, if that makes sense. But again, that is personal preference. So that is it. That is all my sliders and settings. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, I'm going to put this video on that page that is linked in the description below every single video where my sliders and settings are at. I will always update that page if I change something. So hopefully that'll be useful as well. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.